Hello everyone, I would like to start off by talking about Camp Pendleton. Camp Pendleton is a sprawling military base located in California, and it has been home to thousands of Marines and their families since 1942. The base covers 125,000 acres of land and consists of a lot of dry, rocky hills. The Pacific Ocean is located to the west of the base. Now, Marines undergo rigorous training exercises that include combat drills, live ammunition practice, and wilderness survival. Although the goal is to produce and train Marines into being the best versions of themselves, Camp Pendleton has faced many challenges over the years. First, there is an extremely high rate of Marines trying to take their own lives and Marines being successful at this task. Between 2010 and 2015 alone, 31 Marines thought life was too much to handle and decided the world would be better without them. That means that the average death per year was around five Marines. Camp Pendleton has also faced Marines who have had sexual assault charges against them. Private First Class Avery Rosario sexually assaulted a 14-year-old that was found in his barracks room just last summer. Some of you might have even heard of former Camp Pendleton Marine Andrew Urdiales. He was a serial killer that was convicted of killing eight women throughout the 80s and 90s. He was sentenced to death, but he was found dead in his cell a month after being transferred to San Quentin Prison. Today's video, though, is on Derlin Ray Threats, a former Camp Pendleton sergeant who was sentenced to death for killing 24-year-old Carolyn Neville. And just for some context, the military ranks are Private, Private First Class, Lance Corporal, Corporal, Sergeant, Staff Sergeant, Gunnery Sergeant, First Sergeant, Master Gunnery Sergeant, Sergeant Major, and Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. Derlin Ray Threats was born in 1981. He came from a good home, and his father Thomas Threats served as a Marine for the United States during times of war, and he instilled discipline and structure in his household. Thomas claimed that Derlin was not street smart, but always thought he was. Maybe because a lot of his friends had street smarts. Thomas believed the young men he hung around did not have Derlin's best interest at heart, and Derlin just wanted to fit in. Thomas claimed that Derlin had a big heart and always tried to help young boys who were going down the wrong path, but it did not always work out in his favor. He recounted being very active in Derlin's life, though. They took trips to fun places like Legoland, and his mother would frequently take him to the beach. Things took a turn for the worse, though. Derlin's mother's addiction to drugs got worse, and she was unable to be there for him as a mother. Thomas was awarded custody, and Derlin went to live with him on a military base. Derlin was separated from his mother, his brother, and his sister now. It was just him and his father. Because Thomas was an active duty Marine, he was never in one place for a long time, so the two were constantly moving. Derlin changed many schools because he was moving throughout the country on a regular basis, living with his dad or other family members like his grandmother or a woman Thomas was dating. Thomas knew his son wanted stability, but he was not able to provide it. Instead of hanging around the wrong crowd, Derlin was a part of the wrong crowd. In 1996, at the age of 15, he was put into the system for the first time because he took part in an armed robbery of a fast food restaurant in Vista, California. Despite the instability and getting into trouble with the law, when Derlin officially became an adult, he decided to follow in his father's footsteps. He joined the Marines. Just because Derlin was working his way up in rank with a respectable job, it did not mean his disrespectful actions stopped. In 2003, when he was 22 years old, mind you, still an active duty Marine stationed at Camp Pendleton, Derlin, who was now a sergeant, committed yet another crime. He made his way past being a private, a private first class, a lance corporal, and a corporal. One day, he decided he was going to steal guns and bullets from the base's armory. He was busted for this, but he was only convicted in a military court and served a brief sentence on the base. After serving his time, he left the army. It was during this time he had been dating a woman named Isabel, and the two of them eventually got married. Isabel had a four-year-old son of her own, but Derlin accepted him as his own. It is unknown what Derlin was doing for work, but whatever it was or wasn't, it did not stop him from his illegal activity. Derlin moved back to Vista, California, the same city he was busted in for an armed robbery when he was younger. A couple of years later, in 2005, he would do the unthinkable. 
In the same town lived a 24-year-old woman by the name of Carolyn Neville. She lived in a two-story house with her husband, Stephen Neville, and their six-year-old son. Carolyn was a hard-working college student who was studying hard to better her education. On top of being a wife, a mother, and a student, Carolyn was also working as a waitress at the Shadow Ridge Country Club. On September 1st, 2005, Stephen left the house for work and Carolyn left the house to drop her son off at school, not knowing that that would be the last time she saw her son. She was driving back home, but while she was on her way home, her house had been empty for a bit. This was eye candy for Durlin. He broke into the Neville family home and instead of stealing anything of value, some video games caught his attention. As soon as he got a hold of the video games that piqued his interest, Carolyn walked into the home and spotted him. She was of course extremely scared, but before she was able to escape or call for help, Durlin went to the garage and grabbed a pair of garden shears. He returned to where Carolyn was inside the home and proceeded to assault her. Carolyn lost her life after being assaulted with the shears over 70 times. Although Carolyn wasn't able to call for help on her own, neighbors heard the screams and there were multiple calls about a possible crime in progress at Carolyn's home. Authorities responded fairly quickly and when they began surveying the property, they noticed a man jumping over Carolyn's backyard fence. There was a chase, but the chase would not last long. Derlin was spotted a few houses down and he was arrested. Police noticed that Derlin had no shoes on, his socks were soaked in blood, he had a stun gun with him, and a wooden stick stuffed down the leg of his sweatpants. Police believed the wooden stick belonged to a tool like a hammer. When the inside of Carolyn's two-story home was searched, police not only discovered her body, but they noticed blood all throughout the house, blood on each floor of the home. Despite the scene and how Derlin was found, he claimed he was innocent and his wife Isabel was sticking by his side. Derlin's trial began on December 8, 2009, a few years after the murder. By that time, Stephen Neville had remarried, but he still wanted justice for the wife he had for only 13 months. Stephen was quoted saying, This is a very vicious, one of the worst catastrophic events to take place in my life. I'll not rest comfortably until I see you take your last breath. He told the court he regretted not having been able to stop the crime. Not being there that day has left a psychological scar I'll never recover from. Aside from Stephen testifying, Derlin's father testified, and there were other witnesses as well. At the conclusion of the two-month trial, the jury had their minds made up. They took into account that Derlin chose not to speak not once during the trial and showed no emotion. Superior Court Judge K. Michael Kerman said the case was unmerciful with all of the repeated assaults. He said that was the most aggravated, callous torture of a victim his court has ever seen. A jury ended up finding Darylin guilty of murder, despite him and his wife Isabel continuing to say he was innocent. Now it was time for the jury that consisted of eight men and four women to decide the sentence. They met over the course of the next six days. They ultimately recommended that Darylin receive the death penalty after being found guilty of first-degree murder, robbery, and burglary. Judge Kerman agreed with the recommendation and Derlin was officially sentenced to death. When Derlin's sentence was read, he showed no emotion. Outside of the courtroom, his wife Isabel, who stood by his side for all of those years, said that her husband was innocent and they would fight to get him out. Derlin's defense attorneys did try to get the trial thrown out for jury misconduct. He believed that since jurors did not get to hear Derlin speak because he chose not to, jurors did outside research. The judge denied the attorney's request and said that the juror who complained about the other jury members misinterpreted many things that were said and done, but overall, the jury members did everything that was asked of them. Defense attorney Mr. Rumble said, Not only did Mr. Threats lose today, society and our self-government form of government lost today. That's why Lady Justice is crying. After sentencing, Derlin made no statement. He looked at his wife and family there to support him and he was sent to jail before being transferred to death row. Derlin is currently being held at the San Quentin prison in California. Thank you all for watching another episode of Death Row Executions. Let me know what you guys think of this story in the comments below.